Geometry Unit 11, Section 4, Perpendicular Points and Slopes. Now, there is no video for 11-3, uh, so if you're looking for that, we skipped that section. Um, there's videos for 11-1 on distance, 11-2 on defining regions, and this is the next video, 11-4, Perpendicular Points and Slopes. Before we get started here, there's two things you need to know. One is the slope formula, which I believe you learned uh, in Algebra 1. The slope formula, but I'm going to write it here. Slope formula. I think it's on the next page in your packet too if you're following along with my in-class packet. The slope formula M is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. It is the, um, we call this the change in Y over the change in X. And that triangle is the symbol change, which I'm sure is very confusing because in geometry it also stands for triangle. Um, but on coordinates, we, it stands for uh, change. So triangle Y means change in Y, and triangle X is change in X. So the change in the Y over the change in X, Y over X, that's your slope formula. And we use a lowercase m for the variable slope, like Y equals MX plus B and so on. The other thing that's really important for you to know is about perpendicular slopes. Perpendicular slopes, and again, this is something you covered in Algebra 1. The perpendicular slopes are negative reciprocals. So, uh, for example, uh, if I have the slope of um, positive 2 over 3, perpendicular to positive 2 over 3 is negative 3 over 2. 2 over 3, the whole fraction is positive. Negative 3 over 2, the whole fraction is negative. Remember, when you have negative 3 over 2, it's not that like the 3 is negative and the 2 is positive. It's that 3 over 2 together are negative. Um, so you see that it's flipped upside down and negated. Um, so perpendicular slopes. When you have perpendicular slopes, one of them will be a positive slope of an increasing, like an incline, and one of them will be a negative slope for, for a decline. So you always have one positive, one negative if you have two perpendicular slopes. And then there's parallel slopes, which are just the same slopes. So that's pretty easy. But um, those are the things you're going to need to know to, to get this. So given points A and B, uh, A is the point 3, 2, B is the point negative 4, 1. Uh, determine the location after a counterclockwise rotation about the origin for the given point. So um, we're not working with A and B together right now. Uh, we're going to. But for now, just focus on point A. So just point A. And we're going to rotate around the origin. And we're going to rotate it 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees. Remember, counterclockwise is our default rotation direction. So if it's not specified, then it's counterclockwise. If we specifically say clockwise, then of course it's clockwise. Or even if we say negative 90, that means clockwise. But counterclockwise is the, is the way that we like to go. Um, so the way to rotate point A around the origin is to think about the slope. What is the slope here? The slope from the origin to A is up 2 over 3, is 2 over 3. Now, the 180, I think, is actually the easiest to find first, because all I need to do is continue that slope through the origin. So instead of up 2 over 3, I'm going to go down 2 over 3 this way, and that is my rotation of 180. It's just simply uh, you know, half a circle away. So that, that's the easiest one to do there is 180, and that would give me the point uh, negative 3, negative 2. But 90, 270 are, aren't quite as easy. Now, perpendicular is what a rotation of 90 degrees. Remember, perpendicular lines in like a right triangle, uh, they're perpendicular because they have a 90 degree angle. So a perpendicular rotation, which is 90 and 270, to rotate 90 degrees, what I want to do is I want to figure out what the perpendicular slope of this. And we already said that perpendicular to 2 over 3 is negative 3 over 2. And so that's going to be the slope from the origin that I need to do. And if I do that slope from the origin, down 3 over 2, that last stick with green, down 3 over 2 lands me here. This one, if I have to go up 3 over 2, lands me here. And... So to rotate 90 or 270, you want to figure out what the current slope is between the point and the point of rotation and do a perpendicular slope from the point of rotation. So instead of up 2, we're over 2. Instead of over 3, we're up and down 3. Okay? 
And then since we're going counterclockwise, this would be our 90 degree rotation. We already mentioned 180, and then this would be where the 270 lands. So 90 degrees for A would be the point negative 2, 3. And uh, 180 we already did. 270 would be 2, negative 3. And remember, 270 is the same thing as 90 clockwise, or 270 counterclockwise. That's the same thing. All right, let's do the same scenario, but this time for point B. So here's point B, um, and I'm going to rotate around the origin. So I want to figure out what the slope connecting those is. This is a down 4 over 1. So that's a negative 1 fourth slope, right? It's a definitely a decline um, from left to right. It's a down 4 over 1. So 180, I do another down 4 over 1. That brings me here to my 180 rotation. And that's the easiest one. It's just 1 negative 4. And then for the 270s, uh, for the 90 and 270, I have to think what's perpendicular to negative 1 fourth. If I flip this upside down, I would make it positive 4 over 1. The whole fraction becomes positive. So from the origin, instead of, um, I'm sorry, I, I, this, the, I'm messing this up. I mean, let me go back and erase this, and maybe you're noticing this. Maybe I'm not. That the slope here is not negative 1 fourth, the original. The original slope is negative 4 over 1. That's this is down 4 over 1. Sorry about that. And perpendicular to that would be positive 1 over 4. That's better. So then for 90 degrees and 270 degrees from the origin, it would be up 1 over 4, you know, down 1 over 4. That would be these two points are perpendicular to these two points. And from here, 90 degrees would go in counterclockwise. This would be my 90. 180 and my 270. Um, so 90 degrees is negative 4, negative 1. Uh, 180 we got, 270 is 4, 1. Now, these questions are very difficult to do without a graph. Um, luckily, the back of every Regents exam is scrap graph paper. So if they don't give you, if they ask you these type of questions and don't give you a graph, then Plot them yourself on that scrap paper and, and use that because it's really difficult to do these without. Now, rotating about the origin, we actually have rules. Like A is, is 3, 2. You just negate them for 180. And for 270 and 90, you, you flip them and change the sign of one of them. But, and we used to memorize those rules in old geometry, but ever since Common Core took over, we don't bother to memorize those anymore because they're only helpful for rotations about the origin. And honestly, you're not going to see those types of questions. The questions you're going to see are questions like this. If I rotate A around B, where does it fall? And so those rules about rotating about the origin mean nothing when it's two random points. So this is where it gets a little difficult, a little challenging, um, is these questions here. And I'm just going to do this first one here, save time, because we're going to practice this a lot in class. So if A is rotated 90 degrees about point B, where will A land? So first thing is we want to find the slope of A, B, and that's why we need to know our slope formula. And that is subtract the y's over subtract the x. So subtract the y's would be 4 minus 2. Subtract the x's, uh, negative 1 minus 3. And 4 minus 2 is 2. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. And here's where it gets a little tricky. Last year in Algebra 1, when you did the slope formula, you simplified this. I do not want to simplify it right now. The reason I don't want to simplify it is because when I rotate, I need to be the same distance. And if I simplify that to be 1 over 2 and then rotate, I won't be the same distance as, you know, up 2 over 4. You know, so I need to keep this unreduced for now. All right, so that's the slope of AB. The perpendicular slope to that, let me move this out of the way for a minute, perpendicular to 2 over negative 4 would be positive 4 over 2. And remember, this is your change in Y and your change in X. So what we need to do is change Y by 4 and X by 2 for a 90 degree perpendicular rotation, about point B means this is the point of rotation right here. 
This is what we're rotating around. That's the point we use for changing this. A has been moved, and, and so A is gone. But like, think about this. Like when we were doing this about the origin, you know, once I knew my slope was negative 3 over 2, I did that from the origin, not from A. So the point of rotation is what you are changing the y and x from once you know the slope you're using. This is very, I honestly believe this is the hardest or one of the two hardest things we do all year. So if this is my change in y, change in x, about point B means I need to use point B, which is negative 1, 4. And I'm going to write it twice. Because changing the y value by 4 and the x value by 2, there's two ways to do that. They can either both be increasing, like changing the x by 2 and the y by 4, or they could both be changing the x by 2 negative and changing the y by 2 uh, by 4 negative. So remember, negative 4 over negative 2 is equivalent to 4 over 2. So I don't know if, um, if I need them to both be positive or both be negative from this. So that's why I want to experiment both. In this case, if I add, I get 1, 8. And in this case, if I subtract them, I get negative 3, 0. One of these is rotating 90. One of them is rotating 270. You have to figure out which one it is. And if you're not given a graph, even, I would even do a sketch, even if you don't have the graph. Um, that uh, point A is, is 3, 2, so over 3, up 2, that's, that's A, and B is negative 1, 4, that's B. So here are these points. So 90 degrees is going to be something like this. I'm going to point here or point here. This is 90. This is 270. So I'm looking for the point that's up here. So which one makes more sense, 1, 8 or negative 3, 0? Here's your 1, 8. Here's your negative 3, 0. It's this one up here. So that's how I know this is my answer, not that. That would be my 270 or 90 clockwise. So again, I, I do believe this is a very, very confusing, very, very challenging topic. So we're going to really spend a lot of time on this in class. Um, I just wanted to give you a taste of it now. The things you really need to know coming into class are your slope formula, the concept of perpendicular negative reciprocal slopes, and, uh, and just kind of having an idea of what we're going to be do, But it's going to be a challenge, but we're going to really uh, spend a lot of time on it and, and make sure we understand it well in class. See ya.